Hello everyone, Jay here from Jade Productions. It's good to be talking with you all today, and as you can tell from the title of this video, this is a slightly delayed review for, um, Codex Death Watch, which I only just got my hands on. And I've been far too busy with, uh, legal work to, uh, actually look at it properly. So we're just gonna have a quick, um, glance through it now, uh, let you all know my thoughts on it, what I think this is gonna be like in terms of tournament scene in a couple of months down the road, what it's looking like in comparison to other Space Marine Codexes, and a couple other things similar to my Dark Eldar battle report. I'm not gonna focus too much on the units, except for the new units, which are the Primaris, but we won't have to cover too much for them. And we'll focus primarily on their new rules and stuff and how I see people and how I see these things being worked in. How these how I see them being worked effectively and what looks good from a general player's perspective. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So, first things first, just before I jump into anything about the rules section, just I just want to let you guys all know that this codex, its artwork is just beautiful. Like no other codex thus far has really blown me away, besides from the Dark Eldar, in terms of just how beautiful the art inside is. Just, oh my goodness. It is good. I recommend... <laughs> this is a good book, just for the art. But regardless of that, you're all here for rules. So, they have, of course, combat squads, and they shall know no fear, who cares. Um, they're Space Marines, if you hadn't already figured out that, that out. So they've got their special issue ammunition, now, Special Issue Ammunition has a really long list of weapons it now applies to. So it applies to Absolver Bolt Pistols, Auto Bolt Rifles, Bolt Carbines, Bolt Pistols, Bolt Rifles, Bolt Guns, Combi Flamers, Combi Grav, Combi Melter, Combi Plasma, but all of the Bolt Gun profile only. The Guardian Spear, the Heavy Bolt Pistol, the Hellfire Extremis, Bolt gun profile only. Uh, mastercrafted auto bolt rifle, mastercrafted bolt gun, mastercrafted stalker bolt rifle, stalker bolt rifle, stalker pattern bolt gun, <laughs> storm bolter, and twin bolt gun. Um, that is an impressive list, and pretty much everything in this army has something from that list. Which is fantastic. Now, the special ammunition is... One of is it's your chapter tag. It is the thing that is it is your thing for the Death Watch, and it's all pretty cool. So you've got drag, and uh, it's not really changed that much from the index either. So if you know your index version, you'll be pretty familiar with this. You've just got a lot more options in terms of things that can actually fire it because there's a lot of changes in that list of weapons than there was in the index. So the dragon fire bolt, you add one to your hit rolls. For this weapon when you're targeting a unit that's in cover. To be honest, I honestly don't think you'll ever use that one very often. Unless you're particularly targeting someone who's got a minus one to hit army. And they just happen to be in cover. The fact that it only applies when it's in cover makes that one a little bit meh. Otherwise it would be the perfect counter to things like Eldar, um, Tau Stealth Suits, um, Admech, stuff like that. I mean, thematically, you shouldn't be fighting Admech in Chaos, like Alpha Legion, but who cares? You're This This is... I've read through this once so far, and it's basically, take this if you want to screw over at least one faction in particular. It's a tool for everything, especially for Xenos. So the Hellfire Rounds. This weapon always wounds on a 2-up except, except against vehicles and Titanic units. It's a very good one to use. Um... Add three to the Kraken Bolt. Add three to the range of the weapon if it's a pistol, or remove six otherwise. Improve its AP by one to a maximum of AP minus two. Uh, Vengeance rounds. Vengeance rounds have a similar stick where a uh, stick where they've got the subtract three from the range of the weapon if it's a pistol or six otherwise, and improve the AP of the attack by two to a maximum of AP minus three. So, obviously, you're going to use your Kraken Bolts for when you need to deal with things with 5-up, 6-up, 4-up saves. You're going to use your Vengeance Round when you've got to deal with things with Marine Level Equivalent saves, 3-ups. Because a minus 2 is fantastic. 
And minus two is really all you need in this game. To force someone to go from a three up to a five up is to force someone to go from almost a, I'm um, pretty sure it's like a 70 something percent chance to like a 33 percent chance of making their save. So you've got a round for Gek. For, you've got a round for dealing with swarms, you've got a round for dealing with power-armoured enemies, you've got a round for dealing with guys in cover for some reason, and you've got a round for dealing with monsters. And high-toughness uh, high targets. So there you go. Now, as you expect, the Death Watch War Gear list is massive, and I am not going to go through it all. Um, so... Watchmasters are unchanged, Arnos is unchanged, yep. Um, there's only one, I'm only really going to talk about some of the new units here, and that's the Primaris Watch Captain. The Primaris Watch Captain uh, is just a standard Primaris Captain that you should be familiar with if you play Space Marines from, you know, any kind of Space Marine that currently isn't Space Wolves. Poor Space Wolves. My Space Wolves suck. They need a codex fast. Um, he's got all the same stuff, um... That he had as an option in before, so nothing, nothing to you know really point out there. Uh, you've got your Primaris Librarian available. Um, yeah, you've got the Primaris Chaplain, which is just an awesome model. So take it for no other reason than that. Um, so veterans still have all their um, are still the same. They're your bread and butter. Veterans are fantastic. We have some. They make great allies. Okay, so Intercessor Squads, the big thing in this codex is now what the Intercessor Squads and Primaris Marines can do for you. Now, they're a troop's choice, so you can take these alongside your veterans. I personally think a great little thing to do is probably to take a veteran squad and an Intercessor Squad as your two, as like two troops choices, and then, you know, um... Either a watch librarian, actually. I don't really like the librarian's discipline. So probably just a watch captain. Just to get it done with in a patrol detachment. Gear out your um, veterans and your intercessors towards dealing with particular targets. And take them as just an ally detachment. As just a FU button to someone's Xenos game. Or just in particular to anything they try to do. Because this army's really cool that way. Because... Well, yes, a lot of their stratagems are geared towards fighting Xenos. They them their gear themselves and how they interact makes them very good counters to most things in general. So the intercessors they can have inter the intercessor squad can this is confusing intercessors and then you can All right so it can have intercessors intercessor sergeant hellblaster inceptors reavers and aggressors inside of the squad. So, all the standard things there for their normal equivalent, for their normal equipment, are right there as they exist in other codexes. So, if you know what equipment they can take, you can take the exact same equipment. You know, it's the stuff in the, it's the stuff in the box. Um, they have mixed units, just like their veterans, and the veteran. Yep. So they have mixed units, just like for their veterans. It works the exact same way. So they have. Crushing Charge on the Inceptors. Inceptor Strike. Grapnel, yeah. Terror Troops. Now, the, the really big ones that are important here, in that if you include a Reaver in your Intercessor Squad, then you subtract one from leadership characteristics if from your enemy if they are within three inches of any Reaver units or units that include any Reaver models. So congratulations, you just turn your intercessors into Reavers, though in this book, Reavers are better than if they are by themselves. Uh, Firestorm is probably... Firestorm and Relentless Advance are probably the number one things you want when you put your intercessor squad, because you probably want Hell Blasters in this. And, yeah, these these two traits that you get from taking a single intercessor, from taking a single aggressor, sorry, um, are absolutely phenomenal and great abilities just to have on any sort of unit. And your mixing matching abilities in the intercessor give you a lot of freedom to make the most out of the shooting weapons that the Hell Blasters have. The Inceptors don't have, you know, the firepower to make it really worth them, but 
on aggressors and hellblaster mixed squads, then hey, go ahead. Your your inceptors in this squad are basically just attacks. So the firestorm says aggressors in this unit can fire twice if they remain stationary during their turn, including when they go with Overwatch. That's fine that it doesn't transfer over to your guys. Who cares? Have an inter have an aggressor in the squad. One aggressor, please. It, I guarantee one aggr three aggressors by themselves make people cry if used correctly, and they're a lot of fun. Having one of them means, you know, just pile on your use your intercessors. Use your sorry, use your incep. What are they called? Use your intercessors to as bubble wrap, like have them out the front of this squad. Remove them as the casualties first. Have one or two um, aggressors in the middle of the squad, and then the rest of it should all just be filled with Hellblasters. So, Relentless Advance is a really cool thing. A unit of intercessors that includes any aggressors does not suffer any penalty to their hit rolls for advancing and firing assault weapons or for moving and firing heavy weapons. I think that speaks for itself. It's a very diverse squad, just like the veterans. Personally, I kind of prefer the veterans, simply because there is m way more in terms of equipment you can take. You can gear them out to be far more deal with a certain thing. They, <clears throat> they have more tools to work with, the standard veterans. But the intercessors definitely have their place, and they definitely, you know, really bring out the different traits this book in particular definitely brings out the different traits of the Primaris Marines. Uh, Primaris Apothecary, it's an Apothecary. Duh. Uh, Venerable Dreadnought, Dreadnought, Redemptor Dreadnought. It's a beast, it's overrated, it's underrated, it performs badly, it performs well, it really depends on your kind of luck you're having when it comes to Redemptor Dreadnought, I found. And to be honest, I think the Macro Plasma Incinerator is kind of overrated, but you gear it out depending on what you need, just like, you know, you would normally, like, sure. Terminators, Reavers, Reavers are a standout unit in this, my goodness. They're, the, they're deep striking, they're infiltrating, they're terror troops, they've got their grapnel launches to let them ignore stuff, they've got their excellent shock grenade, they've got their Bolt Carbine, which now is 24 inches Assault 2, Strength 4, and it now has access to those Special Issue Ammunition. It's pretty neat. Special Issue Ammunition makes Reavers a very fun time. Aggressors, now sadly, their Auto Bolt Storm Gauntlets, from what I read just before, do not sadly get Special Issue Ammunition. So that's actually a bit of a shit, but then again, you probably don't want Aggressors being better than what they are. They are deal, carve your way through hordes of gek, throw dice at your opponent until he, until he gets sick of him and leaves the table. And then, you know, use their power fists to punch a big monster. Vanguard veterans, bikers. Oh my goodness. So when I read through this and I saw that the twin bolt gun and gets this, the first thing I thought was... Give your Deathwatch bikers a Storm Bolter. Then they keep their Twin Bolt Guns. Now you have... Oh, uh, at Rapid Fire range, you've got four, five, six, seven, eight shots. you got eight shots apiece with whatever special issue ammunition you want. Did that just sink in? Eight shots per biker. And, icing on the cake, the bikers are really, really affordable. Yeah. Bikers can really lay down the hurt and darker in this book. Um, Inceptors are there. They're a thing. And Hellblasters are a thing. So, there we go. Land Raiders, Land Raider Crusaders, Redeemers, Razorbacks, Drop Pods, Repulsors, Corvus Black Stars, which are... The darling of this codex, probably the best looking flyer, and overall just a solid unit to support your army. Not as expensive as a Repulsor or a uh, Land Raider, 
not quite as heavy on the firepower, but definitely a very good transport and just overall good unit. It's 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 okay. I'll say that. It's I think it's okay. I love the thing personally. Whether or not it performs well and gets shot out of the sky turn one, well I don't know, I haven't actually used one since 7th edition, but I've fought a few, and T's fought a few, and it, it, mm, it has the survivability of most things with its toughness and wounds, which is, to say, pretty good. So, now we get into the really important stuff. Now that that's, that's all out of the way, let's focus on the real stuff, the Hunters of the Alien. These are your mission tactics. You, of course, have your objective secured, which means to people running hordes. Now you truly are the defenders of mankind. Haha. -ha. So you've got your mission tactics. Now units will with this ability gain a bonus during the battle depending on which mission tactics they are currently employing. Before the battle, pick one of the following mission tactics. That tactic you choose will remain active for the entire battle. Though it may be possible to change tactics during the course of the battle by using stratagems as an example. As long as a tactic is active, it affects all units in your army that have the mission tactics ability. So because you don't have lieutenants in this army, you don't really need them. Why? Because your mission tactics make them completely redundant. So, uh, only, I'm compelled to point out, like all sort of space marine chapter tactic things, it only affects infantry, bikers, and dreadnoughts. So, you've got all your different mission tactics with all their different names, and they all have the same effect bar one word. Basically, you've got reroll wound rolls of one against troops, reroll wound rolls of one against fast attack, against elites, against heavy, HQ, and flyers. Reroll, reroll ones to wound. You just select one. So if you see. So, you know, hmm, my opponent has a vanguard force. Um, he's got a lot of elites there. I'm just gonna set my tactic as, uh, the dominatus one so that I can just reroll wound rolls of one. Congratulations, you now have that special ammunition, special issue ammunition that's wounding on a two rerolling ones. Sweet. And you've got that on bikers, so now you're eight shots. Hitting on threes, wounding on twos, rerolling ones. Congratulations, you're going to force him to make so many saves. Doesn't matter how many Terminators you've got, buddy, or Wolfen. You are going to die. So, that's, that's really it. Now, <clears throat> it seems really bland and boring. For those, those, that, those are your, you know, tactics. That, that's your chapter tactics. Your mission tactics. I, mission tactics. So, that is what you've got. It seems boring. Because you only get to pick one. But you can change it and alter it around. And it becomes a really good thing. Because rerolls in this game, less... Sure, it's not as diverse as some of the fun mechanics of Age of Sigma. But it's still very, very useful. Don't, don't underestimate the ability to get a few extra wounds. So, your stratagems. Let's start on your stratagems. There are quite a few. There's about three pages worth. <clears throat> so, one CP, Armor of Contempt. Uh, select a... This is a standard one from, uh, you know, that they all, all Space Marines sort of have. You select your vehicle, and then if it suffers any mortal wounds, it can ignore them on a 5-up uh, for the rest of the phase. Uh, Ospec scan, the fantasticness of that is 2 CP when an uh, enemy unit arrives within 12 inches of one of your Death Watch infantry units. Read Intercessors. <coughs> uh, that unit can immediately shoot at the enemy as if it were the shooting phase, but subtract one from its hit rolls. Sure, still fantastic, doesn't matter which Space Marine Codex it is, it, it's, it's in all of them, it's, it's awesome. It is a good thing. It's probably going to be less useful now. With those stupid fracking beta rules that I hate, that cut off the legs of most armies, <clears throat> especially mine. Uh, 
Uh, you've got the standard one to get extra relics. You've got Hellfire Shells. Uh, use this. It's one CP. Use this stratagem just before a Death Watch Infantry model from your armor attacks with a Heavy Bolter or a Heavy Bolter profile of Infernus Heavy Bolter. You can only make a single hit roll with the weapon. Uh, this phase, subtracting one as normal, if also firing a furnace heavy bolters, heavy flamer as well. However, if it hits, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds. Um, hmm, 1 CP for on a 3 plus to deal D3 mortal wounds. It's, um, well, to be honest, I think it's better spent here. It's a better... Uh, it's better here than the equivalence that it has in uh, other Space Marine Codexes, so carrying on. It's okay, I don't foresee a lot of use out of that one. Orbital Bombardment, 3 CP, this is a standard Space Marine 1, your standard Orbital Bombardment that your Warlord can dish out if he didn't move in the movement phase, and didn't shoot all of his shooting weapons in the shooting phase, you know. Standard sort of affair for D3 Mortal Wounds. Uh, Empiric Channeling. Um, your, which one is this? At the start of your 1 CP, at the, use a strategy at the start of your Psychic phase, if Death Watch Psycho from your army is within 6 inches of at least, yeah, this is, lets you add to the Psychic test for, um, if there are at least two other friendly Death Watch Psychers, so if you want to do an old school Librarius Conclave. I'm not sure why you would, I'm, the Librarius, uh, oh, then again, here's the thing. Um, Librarius Conclave, this is based on something similar to the Librarius Conclave, which existed in 7th edition, which was a very annoying, uh, battalion. Uh, what do they call them? Uh, formations. They're battalions in Age of Sigma. I've been getting into a lot of Age of Sigma lately. Um, that you had a formation available to you. But, back when that existed, Space Marines had access to 6 plus psychic disciplines. Now that they literally with Death Watch and Standard Space Marines Codex only having the Librarius Discipline. I really like that everyone's got their own Standard Discipline. However, the Librarius Discipline is not that good. It is, however, more compatible with this Codex than I think it is with its Standard Codex. So there's that. Are you still gonna need to take more than two Librarians? No. Why do you have three librarians? You, um, you must be going very, very cheap, or really not care about the re-rolls to hits that Watchmasters give you. Um, one to three CP for the Teleportarium. This is the thing you know and love. It would have been better, it is better without the beta rules, because then it lets you set up your frag cannon squad right in front of the enemy, and you can just frag the hell out of them with your frag cannons. Oh, I hate the beta rules. They make fun stuff bad. Uh, use a stratagem during your deployment. For each CP spent on this stratagem, you can either set up one Death Watch infantry unit or one Death Watch Dreadnought in a teleportarium chamber instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, you can set it up. So it costs one to three CP, so... Based on the wording of that, for, you can set up up to three units in the teleportarium. Because it doesn't cost you one for one and then three for two. It costs you one for each unit. So you can put up to three of them in there, which is actually really cool and immediately makes it that much more effective than most other deep striking, um, most other deep striking stratagems. Um, the real potential I see in there is the delivery of um, Flamestorm Gauntlet, um, aggressors, and, um, uh, you don't need it on Reavers, uh, doesn't work on bikers, sadly, but, yeah, jeez, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the most, mostly I see it working on Fragstorm wielding squads of, um, Frag Cannon squads of, uh, veterans and aggressors. That's, that's a recipe for much pain. To be able to get them that close that quickly. So, there you go. Uh, 1 CP for death to the alien. Use this stratagem when a death watch unit from your army is chosen to attack in the 5 phase. Each time you roll a hit roll of 6 plus uh, for a model in the user during the phase. It can, if it was targeting a unit that doesn't have Imperium Chaos or Unaligned, make an additional attack. They don't generate further attacks. 
So, that old spiel. It's good if you have a lot of attacks, I guess. I mean, I'd rather just have some rerolls, to be honest. I'd rather make my Thunder Hammers hit than rely on trying to get a 6 to hit, since I suck at dice rolling. But, it's, it's there. Uh, 2 CP, only in Death to Duty end. This is the usual when a Space Marine Death Watch character dies before it's removed. You can make one final attack as if it was the shooting phase or as if it were the fight phase. 2 CP, you know what, that's a lot more affordable with the FAQ now. So, have at it. Make make them pay for killing your, your uh, watch captain. Uh, 3 CP, honor your brothers. Use this stratagem at the end of any of your fight phase. Select a Death Watch infantry or biker unit from your army. That unit can immediately fight for a second time. That's much more affordable and still as awesome as fighting a second time always is. Uh, put that on your vanguard. Uh, your uh, vanguard veterans unloaded with hammers. Just have fun with that. That Or... Uh, some Terminators, if you've got a Terminator squad outfitted for um, outfitted for melee. But generally, I think in uh, this codex, rather than you know certain other codexes, such as Space Wolves um, and regular uh, Codex Space Marines, I think this book definitely is one of the books where I'm... You definitely feel more darker uh, Terminators than you would Close Combat Terminators. But still, Vanguard veterans being able to fight again, if you can deliver them into the fray, get them in there, you know, get that first turn charge, or get that charge out of deep strike, get in there, hit them, hopefully destroy something, maybe pile into another thing since they've castled up, probably, and then try and eliminate another deadly unit with 3 CP. It's going to cost you a lot of your CP, since, you know, the detachments you often take such elite armies as Space Marines in is, you know, limited, but... The FAQ has your back. Wisdom of the Ancients is the normal thing of let your Dreadnought be a captain for a little while and give you reroll ones to hit within six inches of it. Your flak missile is your standard. Use your guy with a rocket launcher to shoot at a flyer and pay one CP. You add one to your hit roll, so probably hitting on a three plus uh, with an infantry model that has a rocket launcher and boom, D3 model wounds to that flyer. Probably not as effective as just firing a missile launcher at them and doing, you know, D6 damage, but at least I don't get a save. Um, adaptive Tactics, 2 CP. Use this stratagem at the start of any of your turns after the first to change the current mission tactic for another one. If your Warlord is a Watchmaster, you can use this stratagem for 1 CP instead. First things first. 1. That is a really cool ability. Because it lets you change your mission tactic on the fly, which, as we've already established above, are really good because they're a generic re-roll ones against a specific battlefield role. You've got a particular thing that's being a pain in your ass, switch up your mission tactic, eliminate it. Second thing, that is a really cool mechanic that I wish more, um, that I wish more codexes, you know, that have already been made, had. Where the CP cost of, you know, something is reduced because you have an appropriate unit in your army that, you know, obviously would reduce it because they're skilled in this. So, and for only 1 CP to, you know, that's that's actually really worth it, I think, because just the reroll 1s to wound are definitely worth it in this army. So, switch it up for 1 CP to change your mission tactics on the fly. Congratulations, you are now a threat to everything on the board. And your opponent will never be able to really predict, unless he forces you to fight a certain thing, what your mission tactic is going to be for the turn. Uh, 2 CP. So now we're getting into the things that are going to screw Xenos players. These are the FU button to Xenos players, and they're the reason you take a small allied detachment. A small hyphenated finger marks. So... This is part of the reason they make an excellent allied detachment, and, you know, soup may or may not be going the way of the dodo, but that doesn't mean you can't just bring an extra detachment full of Death Watch guys. But either way, they really provide an excellent counter button for everything that you could possibly fight that Xenos. So, that's one of the reasons, and, you know, you only need to take a few of them to get access to these stratagems to be able to use them on your Death Watch guys that you bring. Frag cannons! <coughs> 
I personally think this is one of the number one reasons that we're going to see this codex being seen as, uh, you know, something to bring along to a main force to help sort of counter holes in your army, you know, to counterplay specific enemy factions that you're expecting. So, Stem the Tide is basically, hello Orc players, your army sucks, goodbye Orc players, go home. Uh, it's 2 CP, use this stratagem immediately before firing Overwatch with a Deathwatch unit from your army against a charging Orc unit. Use frag cannons. <clears throat> your opponent must subtract 1 from their charge roll for each model in the charging unit that was slain by your unit's Overwatch. So congratulations, Orc players, for 2 CP. With automatic hitting frag cannons, your 3-inch uh, charge just became a 30-inch charge and you no longer have your mumba boys. Uh, 1 CP, targeting scramblers. Uh, oh boy. Use the stratagem immediately after a Death Watch unit in your army has been hit by one or more Tau Empire Markalites. Immediately remove all Markalite counters from that unit. So this is one that typically is not going to benefit an allied army too much, but in a pure Death Watch army, oh, Tau players are going to be screaming at you. They have to work so hard to get their mark lights, to get their, you know, 5 plus mark lights in the beginning, and for you to just hit a button and say, 1 CP, no. That may cause some rage. This is, this is a book that doesn't make friends, okay? That's still awesome, but also really douchebaggy. Oh boy, I love it. Uh, screw the Tau. They, then again, poor Tau. Uh, 2 CP, Intercepting Volley. Use this stratagem immediately after your opponent moves an enemy Eldari unit that can fly in their movement phase. Pick a Death Watch unit from your army within 12 inches of it. That unit can immediately shoot at the enemy unit as if it were your shooting phase, but you must subtract one from all the resulting hit rolls. So, this is really cool. But, it has its limitations. And personally, I think this should also be what applied to the Tau. First off, it hurts certain Eldari factions more than others. Now, it also hurts certain Eldari lists more than others. So anything to do with bikes and wave serpent spam, or anything involving um, Dark Elder, this one really punishes Dark Elder, you're going to be seeing that really, really hurt. The Harlequins, funnily enough, they're only going to have two units that are really going to be affected by it. Now, at the time of I'm recording this, the Harlequin is now available for pre-order. Um, so we know most of what's going on in that. Um, the Harlequins don't really require a lot of transports in their, in their, their flying transports. They are really blisteringly fast, and they don't have the fly keyword on their standard troops. So, infantry... This punishes definitely using vehicles and bikes on um, Eldar forces, but one of the key things being an Eldari player, that if you play Eldar in this edition, you know, is that your infantry lists are really <laughs> effective. Um, Aspect Warrior spam on an infantry level is really effective. Um, Harlequin troop spam, which, let's face it, you're going to be spamming them, they're only troops choice, are blisteringly fast. Blistering... Uh, I'm struggling to get words out. Blisteringly so. And the fact that they can all have fusion pistols means they hit like a truck. So, I don't think it's actually as effective against Eldari units as you might think. And of course, it says... Uh, unit from your arm. Pick a Death Watch unit from your army within 12 inches of it, immediately after your opponent moves. So, all they've got to do is not end within 12 inches, which is easy to do, because they have a lot of movement on everything that has fly. So I feel like the Eldar can actually really work around this, unlike the Tau one, which is really a central core mechanic that you just get for 1 CP, no Tau, you don't get to use your, one of your core mechanics that make you, you know, do anything remotely with any sort of efficiency. Um, I feel like that's a bit unfair, especially since uh, such a the intercepting volley really would have punished Eldar. Uh, sorry, not really would have punished Tau a lot more 
since they're reliant on their battle suits and they're also most of their vehicles are fly. So, you know, and they <laughs> they kind of really want their battle suits to get in close. So, I guess the thinking of this codex is that you're probably not going to use the inter you you know, you don't really need that when you've got the Ospex scan. Switch, you know, makes sense. But considering the difference between the Ospex scan and the intercepting volley, I feel like, I don't, the, the differences are minor, but they also amount to something huge gameplay-wise. And basically, you can just set traps for your enemy with intercepting volley. Whereas, uh, the Ospex scan is very reactive. So, I don't know. I'm not a hu I don't think intercepting volley is as powerful as you initially think upon first reading it. Uh, Eldar players are definitely going to find ways around it, because they'll be expecting it, and it's really not that great a counter to Eldar. Targeting sc scramblers, which I'm really, you know, again, that is just really mean. Uh, same with Stem the Green Tide, that's just poor orcs. God, they need help. And I'm trying to start an orc army. So, uh, 2 CP, Synaptic Severance. Use this stratagem immediately before choosing targets for a Death Watch unit in your army in your shooting phase. That unit can target Synapse characters this turn, even if they are not the closest enemy units. So, off the hat, I can only think of a... F Ooh, I can only think of two Synapse uh, characters in an army that you cannot actually target. I'm pretty sure Hive Tyrants have more than 10 wounds. Don't quote me on that, though. In fact, I'm going to pause that and find that out right now and grab my codec. Alright, so I just come back from pausing that a little bit, and I've uh, gone through my uh, Tyranid Codex. Um, that literally, that stratagem can literally only target three units. It can target a Broodlord. It can target a Neurothrope, and it can target a Tyranid Prime, who I always seem to forget about. Um, everything else actually has more than every other Synapse unit, especially the Synapse characters, has more than enough wounds for you to target regularly. So... Now, in terms of that, the Broodlord has his Invol save, but he'll go down... So, it's good for killing a Broodlord... It's uh, definitely very good. It's it's definitely more of a... Hmm. So I'm not actually sure if a Gene Stiller Cult Broodlord... Uh, they're a Prime... About to say Primark. Don't know. It's their Prime something has Synapse. Whether or not it's a Synapse character, since I don't care about Gene Stiller Cults. And I've never actually read the, uh, their rules for this edition. Because um, I don't own any. And I've never fought anyone who does. Strangely enough. Um, so, I don't know if it's even any good against Gene Stealer Cults in dealing with that. So, as for dealing with Tyranids in general, the Neurothrope has a 3 up Invol save, so it's hardy enough even if you can target, target it, but at least then you can actually put some saves on and force it to fail, which is the only way to do it. So, there you go. Um, combine... Though, combine that with, uh, you know, a nice, decent squad with healthy rapid fire and a good lot of shots, maybe some bikes with some special ammunition, uh, with some special am special issue ammunition, uh, with the one that's wounding on 2+, plus, uh, you know, being able to target that, you can just pile on save after save and watch, watch them try and fail 5 to 6 3-up invols. You should bring it down. Which, given that most uh, Tyranid players I speak to like to make their Neurothrope the uh, the Warlord, simply to help deny Warlord kill. Um, so, sure. Sure, sure, sure. It, it has that effect. Uh, the Tyranid Prime, well, that thing's dead if you target it with this thing. So, it only targets three units. It's very circumstantial. Very, very, very circumstantial. It's It's... 
how much you get out of those two CP is very much going to depend on uh, your circumstances regarding yourself and how your battle is going. Uh, one CP for overkill. Use a stratagem at the beginning of your opponent's turn before they use reanimation protocol's ability of a Necron unit that is within 12 inches of a Death Watch unit from your army. Your opponent subtracts one from any reanimation protocol rolls they make for that unit. I love this. One, because reanimation protocols are a pain in the ass, and they're the number one thing that makes a very bland, boring, shooting army that just refuses to die really, really annoying. The bad thing is, for you to use this, you have to be within 12 inches, which is the optimum killing range, and Necron players, Necron armies, um... You don't really want to separate them over long distances, I found. Uh, T has got his Necron army, and we've been toying around with that in the off times. And we've got a friend as well who's now a Necron player who's running a very standard thing. You kind of blob them up. And it's awesome, but I don't want to be within 12 inches of a Necron unit. I don't want to be anywhere near a Necron unit. I don't want to be in its firing range. I don't want to be in its rapid firing range. I don't want to be near enough for other units to respond. For picking off stray units, sure, that is fine for one CP. Um, but, you know, the uh, units you want to use that on are not going to be the ones you're going to catch alone a lot of the time. You can do it, and kudos to you to do it, and definitely use this if you can. These all require a very high degree of finesse to pull off and use effectively, these stratagems. Um, yeah. They all require a high degree of finesse, I'm going to say. So, this is a good faction from what I've read thus far. And you know, I've read this once through and I'm reading it again with you all. Um, it's a very, like all Space Marines, it's a very easy to to use, it's very intuitive, it's very powerful, but it's definitely hard to master as per all Space Marines. There's definitely a lot of trips and, uh, there's definitely a lot of finesse and some tips and tricks you're gonna have to master as you play these guys, which you'll pick up as if you pick these guys up as a full army. Uh, then you've got Fura, Venator, Dominatus, Malleus, Purgatius, Raptorus, Doctrines. Oh boy, so these doctrines, you select the type of uh, uh, battlefield role they're associated with, so elite, heavy, so on and so forth, and you, for 2 CP, you add 1 to your wound rolls against that specific target. So, in particular, if you're wondering how it particularly works, you use the stratagem just before a Death Watch unit from your army attacks an enemy unit with your associated whichever one you've chosen, so Heavy Support or Lord of War Battlefield roll for Malleus, and you add one to that unit's wound rolls for that attack. <sighs> Everything I see in this codex just screams to me Frag Launcher spam. So, continuing on, uh, you've got Optimized Salvo for 1 CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase immediately before choosing a... Choosing targets for a Death Watch unit from your army with the special issue ammunition ability. Different models in that unit can use different kinds of ammunition for that attack. Select which units will fire which types of ammunition before any rolls are made. So, um, uh, units in your army before choosing to... Yeah, so that's great if you want to split fire your forces, which, you know, is typically a pretty good idea when you've got mixed units such as the Intercessors and the Veterans. Uh, 1 CP for Clavis. Use this stratagem in your fight phase. Select one enemy vehicle within one inches of a mass Watchmaster from your army and roll a D6. On a 2+, plus, the vehicle suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay. 2 CP, uh, Decapitation Doctrine. Use this stratagem before a Death Watch unit from your army attacks in the shooting or fight phase until the end of the phase. Reroll failed wound rolls for attacks made by that unit that target the enemy warlord. If you really have a lot of frag cannons available 
and you really, really want to bring down that Hive Tyrant, this is one of the ways to do it. But it also says Death Watch Unit, which means, rather fantastically, it works with the uh, vehicles you've got. So, it works with your Last Cannon and... Uh, Works with your Corvus Black Star. Works with your Last Cannon uh, Land Raiders. So cool. Uh, Nato. So high, high wound warlords, watch out. Or anyone who catches a warlord off guard. There's really a lot of a lot of these stratagems are going to be really situational, and you're really going to have to master maneuvering your army around. Which is why I think the Corvus Black Star is such a great thing because it gives the level of maneuverability this army needs in order to work. Uh, same with the teleportation stuff, which is why I think the beta rules for limiting deep striking will really, you know, suck. <clears throat> I think I've made my opinion on that well and truly noted by now. 1CP for tactical flexibility. Uh, use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select a Death Watch unit from your army with the combat squad's ability that has 10 models, you can immediately separate them into 5-man models. Unless it's a 6-man uh, model, such as, you know, aggressors, bikers, and scepters. You know, just combat squad stuff. Tempest Shells. Use this stratagem just before a Death Watch infantry model from your army attacks a vehicle with a weapon that can fire special issue ammunition. You make a single hit roll with the weapon this phase, however, if it hits, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds. Um, probably a good thing to uh, put to use that on is probably one of your characters. Just increase, you know, their damage output if they've, you know, just, just saying. Because they'll hit it on 2 plus and it's just D3 mortal wounds, so. But it's against a vehicle, so. Yeah. Just get frag cannons. Frag cannons and last cannons. That's the way you go. Warlord traits. Okay. So we're coming into the final stretch here. So we'll quickly run through the warlord traits. Uh, just to note that Watch Captain Artemis has the Vigilance Incarnate Warlord trait. Which, uh, really quick, is once during the battle at the start of your turn, you can choose to change your army's current mission tactics for another one. Um, it's only one during the battle, but, you know, never hurts to be able to change those mission tactics. Uh, okay, so you've got Bane of Monstrosities. Uh, your Warlord can reroll failed wound rolls for your Warlord when attacking enemy vehicles or monsters. You are probably never going to use that. Lord of Hidden Knowledge. Once per battle, if your Warlord is on the battlefield, you can reroll a hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, or saving throw. In addition, if your army is battleforged and your warlord is on the battlefield, roll a d6 each time you use a stratagem. On a 5+, plus, you gain that command point. Alright, that's probably going to be your default. That is definitely going to be your default warlord trait, because you're going to be stretched for command points to begin with and recycling them. Considering your vast array and just, you know, the ones that let you just add one to wound rolls, yeah, that's pretty good. So... Uh, Castellan of the Black Vault, uh, add one to the damage characteristic of one weapon carried by your Warlord. Note that this cannot be a relic of the Vigilant and does not affect, uh, weapon using the Bane Bolts of Eryxia. So it doesn't affect relics in any way. Um, no, unless you particularly want to damage four Thunder Hammer, which could be quite awesome. But you probably still hit, hit the, uh... You're probably still going to choose the Lord of Hidden Knowledge there. Uh, the Watch Eternal, roll a d6 each time a Death Watch model f a Death Watch model from your army within 6 inches of your Warlord loses their last wound. On a 6, the wound is not lost. So, your Warlord provides a supporting bubble of a 6-up Feel No Pain. Or a 6-up Ignore Wounds, as we're supposed to call it now. Um, you know what? <clears throat> it only works for the last wound. So it's very similar to... It's basically a bubble ability of what the Admech have on one of their Forge Worlds, which is actually pretty good. It has its own weaknesses in how it's worded and how it works, but it's not a bad choice if you want a more support-orientated um, 
Warlord there to help keep your guys, your very few guys, alive a little bit longer. Um, we've covered Vigilance Incarnate, and now nowhere to hide. At the start of your shooting phase, each of your shooting phases, pick one enemy unit anywhere on the battlefield. For the duration of the phase, that unit does not receive the benefit of cover against attacks made by Death Watch units from your army that are within six inches of your Warlord. Um, that's another uh, decent one, depending on what kind of cover you're playing with. Depending on what kind of board you're playing with. Um, frag cannons that ignore cover, that's pretty good. There are a couple of factions who that have abilities that convey cover, so, you know, you can strip that off particular units that they're trying to protect. Uh, so far, Vigilance Incarnate, uh, Lore of Hidden Knowledge are probably the top two. So the ones you're going to be picking the most. They are just all general decent. Um, they're just, you know, good no matter what the situation is. And then probably the Watch Eternal is like a third choice. Everything else comes down to circumstance and personal choice, I think. Um, relics of the Vigilant. Okay, so there's a couple relics here. I'll we'll make them quick. You've got the Bane Bolts of Eryxia. Models with the Special Issue Ammunition ability only add one to the damage of any Special Issue Ammunition fired by the bearer in addition for each wound roll of a 6 plus made for any Special Issue Ammunition fired by the bearer. The target suffers one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Problem is, you can only put these on uh, characters and you, to make the most out of that ability, you're probably going to want them firing something with a lot of shots that can use Special Issue Ammunition. Which immediately brings to mind Storm Bolters. So, that's not bad. Because with Storm Bolter, you can get four shots doing that. So, you can get four Storm Bolter shots that you can potentially get, you know, anywhere between AP minus one to two on. Or you can get uh, wounding on twos, probably re rolling ones. And of course, hitting on twos, re rolling ones, four shots. And then uh, damage two, strength four. And then any 6-ups cause an uh, uh, additional mortal wound. So it's not bad. I had really only taken on a Storm Bolter wielding character. Never taken on anything else. It's just not worth it. Uh, the Beacon of Angelus. Uh, once per battle at the end of your movement phase, a bearer can use the Beacon of Angelus to teleport a friendly unit to his position. When he does so, select a Death Watch infantry or biker unit. Is either on the battlefield or that is in the teleportarium. In either case, remove that unit and then set it up wholly within six inches of the bearer, more than nine inches from any enemy model. Any models that cannot be set up are slain. I think this was one of the ones in the chapter approved, and I still think it's awesome. I think there's a lot of potential in there. It's sort of a Death Watch equivalent of the Veil of Darkness that the Tyranids have. Uh, not the Tyranids, the Necrons have. Wow, am I tired from working on lore stuff. Um, so you've got that. <clears throat> uh, personally, I think it's really good. I actually quite like the ability to be able to move my units across, especially in this kind of small unit army where you're probably going to be scattered across the board and your mobility is going to be key to winning and taking advantage of all your special rules. So, hooray for that. So you can just relocate your guys towards whatever your character is. So... In case he's the last guy standing. Um, you've got the Dominus Aegis, model with a storm shield only. The Dominus Aegis replaces a bearer's storm shield. The model has the bearer has a three plus invulnerable save. Well, yeah, it's got a storm shield. In addition, if the bearer does not move in the movement phase, then until the start of your next movement phase, friendly death watch models within six inches of the bearer gain a five plus invulnerable save. Well, you know what? You were probably gonna take a storm shield on your guy anyway. That's really interesting. So, if you've got something like a uh, Watchmaster, you can, you know, give him the Bane Bolts of Eryxia to have him be a bit more, um, dealing a bit more damage in the uh, shooting phase. Or you can give him a Storm Shield and probably a Thunder Hammer and turn him into a bit of a, you know, a bit of a tank that supports the rest of your guys. So, that's really cool. I really like those two relics. Their use is... Yeah. Extra war gear is always fun to play with. Uh, the... Oseus Key. Oseus Key. Okay. 
Uh, watch masters only. Enemy vehicles subtract one from their hit rolls whilst they are within nine inches of this model. Each time the bearer fights, you can make one additional attack with the OCS key against any vehicle within one inches of them if the attack hits the unit. The target unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. It's interesting. I would personally never take it. The Thief of Secrets, a uh, model with a power sword only, replaces Bearer's power sword. Uh, the Thief of Secrets is melee, melee, strength user, AP minus 3, damage 2. When setting up the Bearer, pick one of the following keywords. Orc, Tyranid, Tau, Eldari, or Necrons. You can reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon when attacking enemy units with that keyword. Pass. The Tome of Ectoglades. At the start of each of your turns, pick a mission tactic. Until the start of your next turn, you can choose to apply either the effects of the mission tactic that is currently active, or the mission tactic you have chosen for the Tome of Ectoglades to any Death Watch unit from your army that is within 6 inches of the bearer each time they attack. Okay. I like that one. That's probably going to be your default choice. That is... It, yeah, yeah, that's probably going to be your default choice. Just because your mission tactics give you so much versatility. And versatility is what this army just completely encompasses. And to be honest, I foresee... Well, personally, if it was me, I'd just be spamming, you know, bolt guns and uh, frag cannons. So, which, you know, you'll need those rerolls to wounds and those plus ones to wounds. So, that's... I like that. Yep, that's probably going to be your standard one. Your Beacon of Angelus is probably going to be your second pick, and then I probably, after that, the Bane Bolts or the Dominus, you know, the Dominus Aegis, so, you know. But I think those two are the standout ones that you're going to be using a lot. Um, the Beacon of Angelus, I really like the relocating your guys around the battlefield towards where one of your characters is, so you can sort of sneak in a character around somewhere, have them hold an objective, and if, you know, they start coming after him, you can relocate one of your scores that's just finished killing another unit straight to him. The turn of the Ector Glade is just great because it's, you know, you've got your army, here are your guys, they've all got your mission tactic in play, so they can all decimate, you know, the enemy elite's choice because they brought a Vanguard one. But you've got a couple of your guys that you've got your CP prepared to spend on the sniper thing. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, so you've got your CP prepared for whatever thing. Which one was it? Um, I've forgotten which one it was already. Jeez, I just read those. Um... You've got your other ones prepared, and you've got their heavy weapons that you particularly want to deal with a different target, so you change their mission tactic to something else for a turn. Sweeto. You've got the Librarius Discipline, which is completely unchanged. You've got the Veil of Time, Fury of Ancients, Might of Heroes, Psychic Fortress, Psychic Scourge, and Null Zone. As per what you might expect, um... Null Zone is probably going to be the number one thing you take, depending on what you're fighting. Psychic Scourge is okay. Might of Heroes is really fantastic in this army. And so is a uh, Veil of Time. And then you've got your Death Watch objectives. Um, your points values. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this. There's been a couple of decreases. I um, don't have my index on me there currently uh, with T. So... Uh, that really just concludes this Codex review. So, all in all... I feel like this is an army that we are... That's everything in the book. So, I feel like this is an army that you're going to be seeing accompanying other armies if it's not by itself. By itself, it's going to pose a disastrous threat to most Xenos players because they've got a tool to pick... To, they've got tools to deal with everything. And, they're, and as just a Space Marine faction, they take everything that Space Marines encompass in terms of versatility, durability, ease of play tool for every job, and they dial it up to 11. These are Space Marines if they were Space Marines on steroids. Um, so that really makes them definitely one of the more powerful Space Marine factions. Spent Space Marine a lot there. Um, taking them as allies is definitely a good sort of way to help plug holes in your army and provide specialist troops to deal with things that you might be expecting, especially depending on, you know, your kind of meta and tournament play. Um, definitely make good allies, um, definitely in larger games, definitely make good allies as well. 
Tournament level, I see them running probably more by themselves, so you can get as many of your sort of specialist units with what you've got by themselves. Because as an army by themselves, they run very well. They're very well tuned. But even just having them as specialist units, as I was saying, they are very, very killing, and they're going to force your enemy to pick between the specialist units that can cripple a lot of their units. You know, if they're a Xenos player, that can cripple a lot of their units. Or they're going to have to pick, if they're not playing Xenos, they're going to have to pick between targeting your other guys and having to deal with these Death Watch units that are still very, very killy and very specialized at taking out particular targets. So, they're like Space Marine Assassins in a way, I guess. And they're really cool. I like them a lot. Um, T, sadly enough, is uh, considering selling his small Death Watch army. I think because of how they work in this new edition, they can provide that sort of allies thing. I think I convinced them to hold on to them. They're also great for narrative projects. Um, which, as anyone who follows my channel will know, I particularly love narrative games and campaigns. So... Overall, they're really good. I question the use of some of their uh, stratagems. I, I question how they work. I don't think they're super the best for... Uh, I get their intention. I don't think they're executed as well as they wanted to, but probably any better, and you'd have the already Xenos, Furious Xenos players probably screaming out a bit more. Particularly, there there is just one or two things I'm just not happy with, and that is just targeting scramblers and stem the green tide. I like them both narratively, but Stem the Green Tide, Orcs are already terrible enough. God, Games Workshop, give us a codex for Orcs. And make them good! And Targeting Scramble is just, well, Tower good, but 1 CP just to be able to take away their Mark Lights. They're probably investing a lot of their Mark Lights into one unit, and for you to just at the end of that go, no, is pretty... Meh. I would have personally made that 2 CP, just to make it a little less annoying. I mean, match play, you can only do that once. But sometimes once is enough to completely screw over a player, which makes it a powerful stratagem. I just think it should cost more than 1 CP. But then again, it's not letting you, you know, do, do this other stuff. Uh, so, there we go. Um, <clears throat> that's it for the Codex Death Watch review. I've been Jay from Jade Productions. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. Slash, um, so thank you for uh, listening and uh, uh, check out more of our work on the channel. And uh, let me know what you think of the Death, Watch, the Death Watch yourself in the comments below. Talk about your list, talk about your armies, talk about what you think of the Codex, how you feel as a Xenos player, um, and how you feel... In general, about eighth edition, the changes that have just come out with the, come around with the big fa with the big FAQ. Uh, so once again, see you on the bounce.